Let's see if we can quiet that down. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be putting on this belt drive conversion kit from Little Machine Shop onto the mini mill. So this is what we get with it. Looks like probably an instruction set, a belt, looks like a motor mounting plate probably. This is a safety cover. It's to protect the uh, upper pulley, the motor pulley probably, from getting any fingers or anything in it. It's plastic. We might make a new one of those out of sheet metal. Aluminum pulleys there. And then it looks like some mounting hardware. So let's get this installed. So looking at it, it looks like this mounting plate here, this black plate that the motor is on, is going to get removed and then replaced with this piece that we have here that provides you some adjustment on the motor for tightening the belt. And the gears are probably inside of here, and those get replaced with the pulleys that came with the set. First thing I'm going to do is unplug this thing. There's a set screw on this one. It's right down over here that we're going to have to loosen so we can take this spanner off. That's reverse thread. The instructions say to loosen it, but they don't say to remove it, so I don't know how far I'm supposed to come up off of there. So right now I'm going to stop there. Take a look at what's in here. So we're going to be removing this plastic gear here and this gear as well. These are going to get replaced with the pulleys. Okay, now we just have to remove this gear. It's keyed. You rotate it around and pry a little bit, rotate, it's coming up. There we go. Remove that guy. Now we need to remove this snap ring. Let's see if I've got some snap ring pliers here. And that guy oh, does not come off super easy. It's just supposed to slide off, but that is not a finely machined surface, I'll tell you that. So, the instructions say this sleeve has to come off. Oh, that's a real pain. So I've already gone this far, and now the whole thing turns on me. So, make sure you take that all the way off while you still have something to, for this to pry against. I might actually have to put it back on. Yep. Let's see if I can do that without screwing it back down. Oh, that is really, really not great for tightness. For those of you wondering, no, 
This is not still on it. This is completely loose. It's far enough out, I don't want to go any further. I'm going to lose it. All of these edges are nice and sharp, too. They were definitely... No uh, time was spent deburring any of this. I'm probably going to take a small file and I'm going to hit these before I reassemble it because that is just, I mean, those are sharp. All right, now we can take this back off and remove this sleeve. So that is disassembly complete. So step one of the directions talk about some clear plastic sleeve. I don't have a clear plastic sleeve. I honestly don't know what it's talking about. There's nothing in this parts bag, and there's nothing anywhere else, and I didn't take any clear plastic sleeve off, so I'm not sure what it means. We're just gonna skip that step. Moving on to the next step, it says we're supposed to put this on here, but this here is interfering with the low high gear here. Let's see if I can show you that a little better. Here's this low high gear. Uh, it's in low. I'm going to try to put this on. You can see it hits. None of these edges were deburred either, so they're a little sharp. You might want to skip along that with the file or something just to smooth that down. Those are the screws that held the old motor mounting plate down. The new ones they provide. Next is the large pulley. It's got a keyway here that's going to go on that wood roof. Just like that. I'm going to put this guy back on, but I'm going to first remove all those edges. Alright, this spanner nut does not want to go on here very badly. It gets to right about there and then it sticks. And it was a real pain to get off. Look, right there, those threads my assumption it's from that set screw coming through pushed into them and uh, you know galled the thread all up so it makes it a real pain to get on and off not the greatest design but I don't see any way around it I'm gonna see if I can hit that with a triangle file and smooth that off just so that this nut goes on a little easier because it does not want to go on right now. All right, I just cleaned this up with some brake cleaner. The inside of this is pretty rough. The tool that they used, I think was fairly dull. So the, the teeth uh, are not smooth at all. I went through the inside of it with a little bit of emery cloth to try to smooth it out. We'll see if that helps. The spindle lock from before no longer fits in there. That's uh, interesting. And it did not come with a new one. I guess we'll use a Allen wrench. That seems like a terrible design. Yeah, that's frustrating. That's actually the most frustrating part so far is that it didn't come with a spindle lock and the exit, the old one doesn't fit. There's no way you're gonna do this without the spindle lock because that thread is just not clean anymore. Cleaning those threads up definitely helped. It's going on much easier than it came off. Alright, that's on. 
Now let's retighten that spanner screw. Drive it right back down onto those threads. The next time it has to be taken off, it's hard as well. This we've got to take off because we're going to mount it onto the motor. All right, we've got to take these four screws out. And of course, this is just short enough that I can't quite lay it down on anything. Maybe if I put it up here. Yeah. I need some ability to push down on it. Fortunately, these screws don't appear to be terribly tight. Now, this is going to mount here with the motor on it like this, right? So it's important to look at where this electrical cord goes in because if it's in any other orientation, we're not going to be able to mount it. The electrical on this motor up here, right here, needs to be facing somewhere around here. Rotate it here, right? So the electrical lines up with this. Just test fit. Okay, that's going to go there. That'll fit just fine. All right, now we've got to put this pulley onto this shaft. Oh, that seems really, really tight. The end of this shaft feels like it's got a little bit of a ridge. I'm going to file just a little chamfer onto it. Especially around the keyway, it's got something going on. it definitely pushed some metal instead of cut. It doesn't want to go down much further, so we might have to use a persuader on it. If I ever have to take that off, it's going to really suck. Alright, that's all the way in. Now we'll tighten the set screw here. Remember, it's small and it's in aluminum, so don't over tighten this guy, it'll screw up real easy. Now, I assume we're going to put this over. We're going to get our belt on. Alright, now. Put this hinge bolt back in here. Alright, now we've got to mount this lever lock. We have to disassemble it here. It's not hard. Put a little spring in here. Don't lose him. We're going to take this. This directly against that with just a little bit of shoulder makes me nervous. That's what holds up. Uh, that's providing the friction. Look at that. So this shoulder just down in here on this plate is what provides the friction to hold this motor in place and keep tension on that belt. There just isn't much there. I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to put a, a washer on that. I just don't trust it. It didn't come with one, but I don't like it without. So I'm just going to use a number 10 flat washer on this. Put that on. I 
at any rate, you get it down so that it's not fully tight. You want it to be able to move. Then we'll put the lever on so that we can use it to tighten it. So the lever goes on in a position where we can make sure we can get it nice and tight. Then we just tension this belt by pushing the motor backward and then tightening that down. Okay, reading the instructions, which is a little unusual for me, I know, it seems that this interference over here is actually intentional. So, you're supposed to bring it all the way up to here so that it intersects and it should be between gears right now so it should not be using the low high gears originally there because we're using the belt drive to determine whether it's in low or high and lastly we have this it's got a protective film on it that I could peel off but I don't really care Plug it in, power it up, she's much, much quieter, it's a lot quieter than it was. And there we go. Belt drive kit installed. Thanks for watching.